Hey people, what's going on? So uh, in this video, I'm going to walk you through how to initiate and conduct a basic but pretty sophisticated uh, statistical analysis of real political science data. In this case, we're going to be looking at the Eurobarometer trend data, which um, has observations on a whole load of different social and political variables um, for thousands of people across uh, multiple European countries from 1972 to 2002. Okay, so it's a really rich data set. Uh, you can find all kinds of topics of interest in it. And uh, most, you know, significant large political science data sets raise some thorny challenges when it comes to, you know, cleaning up the variables and making them actually ready to analyze. Um, and then, especially when you're dealing with this sort of large survey data, uh, there's a certain uh, set of analyses that are very kind of common. Uh, so like looking at graphical visualizations in a certain way um, and then doing something like regression analysis is kind of a typical workflow. Okay, so basically I've written this script and given detailed comments on uh, a basic workflow for uh, kind of wrangling the variables of interest in a data set such as the Eurobarometer. Um, doing some basic visualizations, aggregating the data and visualizing it in a useful way, and then conducting uh, basically, you know, the workhorse of contemporary social science, which is the regression analysis, at least for those of us who use observational data. Okay, so uh, the script is available for you here, I'm just going to literally walk you through uh, the script to kind of explain little things and show you how, how to actually execute the script, and what to expect in your uh, RStudio environment assuming that that's how you're doing it, all right. Okay, so let's jump right in. First thing is I'm going to assume that you've downloaded the file, the data file, and you have it in a directory somewhere that also contains this script, okay? And uh, once you've done that, you have to set the working directory so that R and RStudio knows where to pull files from, all right? Uh, so I'm gonna assume you have all that set up, and once you do, uh, it's literally as simple as loading this script and executing it. You could do it all in one go if you want to, but I will just uh, go through uh, piece by piece to kind of walk you through it. So just select some text. We'll load the packages first. These are the packages that we'll use for uh, different purposes. We need to load the data. It's a very large data set. Well, not that large, but big enough that it's going to take just a, a minute or two. Okay. So we'll just wait for that to load. I've identified a few variables of interest. And, you know, if you find these interesting and want to do an analysis on, on these variables, that's good. Go for it. Or otherwise, you can use this as an example for the variables that you're interested in. Obviously, you should consult the code book to find variables that uh, you want to analyze. Uh, but most of them have this kind of structure. And this is these are some common lines of code, you often find yourself writing for uh, first kind of cleaning up a, a big survey data set such as this one. The big thing is to find missing values and just weird codes uh, that are assigned to different variables. So different surveys will use different codes, but common ones you'll see is uh, certain variables are, or certain observations are given the value of DK or INAP uh, for inappropriate. DK for a don't know, these sorts of things. Every codebook has its different kind of system, but there's basically for every variable that you might be interested in, there's going to be some observations that are, you know, kind of have junk values that you need to be aware of and then uh, change them so that what you analyze is all um, appropriate and makes sense, right? So uh, the data is loaded in. See, we have, you know, more than a million observations. So pretty big data set. Um, so let's just proceed. We can take a quick look at uh, the media use variable, which asks people uh, how much they rely on the media. Just give us a quick look at the categories, very high, high, low, very low, and so on. But you see we have all these junk variables. Um, so we gotta get rid of those. Uh, what we'll do here is assign NAs, so proper missing values that R recognizes to those variables. And that's what these lines of codes do. Then we will um, remove the levels that we just assigned NAs to. Um, 
and any you know any level of the variable that's not used and then we'll rename them so they're all you know properly labeled um, to make things simpler we'll convert this to a numerical scale so we can think about you know um, how much people rely on the media as a as a single kind of numerical measure it's a little bit cheating because um, you know we're taking these qualitative categories and converting them into numbers it's not necessarily true that that works or that that's uh, you know justified but you know for an undergraduate research project or something uh, it's, it's I think perfectly fine um, right and then we'll uh, re restyle it so that it's an intuitive ordering so that a higher number means more media reliance okay all right so basically we're just going to do that for a bunch of other variables of interest i don't need to repeat it each time uh, the next one we'll do is uh, the particip variable uh, which asks people how likely they are to respond or to, to vote in the european parliament elections um, take a quick look at the values okay and similar issues slightly coded slightly differently and we'll do all the same things basically and then we'll look at it cleaned up and see how it looks there you go converted to a numerical variable uh, looks about right income variable it's basically ready to go political interest the same and then uh, interest in EU politics and so on. You could do this for as many variables as you want to study. So you'll see, you know, if you're interested in any of these variables, then I've basically done most of the hard work for you, uh, you know, especially for people who are just beginning to do kind of statistical programming in this way. You know, this sort of stuff can often be the most time consuming, just cleaning up the data. Okay. Even for advanced analysts that is often the biggest challenge okay uh the relimp variable asks the respondent their the importance that they give to religion clean that up so we're breaking it down to either you know there are basically three levels uh a great importance some importance or little importance after you remove the the nonsense uh levels of that factor variable all right we're going to make it um, numerical so that we can do country averages to kind of see if some countries are more or less, uh, you know, assign more or less importance to religion. Okay. Make a subset uh, looking at just Great Britain. Basically, the issue there is when you uh, pool a bunch of countries at one time, uh, when you're looking at individual level data, there are some modeling problems with that. It's not really appropriate. Uh, you can do it, but it requires some more sophisticated attention to statistical uh, details. So we're going to play it safe and just look at uh, when we do a statistical model, we're going to look at just Great Britain by itself. Um, look at the year variable. Here we're going to uh, convert the name of the countries to all uppercase. So it's consistent and easy to see on the graph that we're about to make. So let's say, so a common situation in data analysis is, especially when you're looking at something like survey data across multiple countries, is you want to see the, the country level means over time. Uh, it's a common, you know, question of interest just for exploratory data analysis. Um, so a common thing you have to do is you have to aggregate the data. So what we want to see is the mean religious significance or religious importance, uh, you know, the importance attached to religion. We want to see the mean for all the available countries in each year and then plot it over time it's a really recurring kind of structure that you want to see all right so here's one approach to doing it the first thing you need to do is aggregate the data um, and this code here does that uh, first we subset the variables of interest and then we use the aggregate function uh, to create you know country year means that's what this does then we'll use the melt function to, to melt the data into a format that ggplot likes. You'll notice that the aggregate function 
relabels the variables group one and group two for country and year. Um, so we're using that labeling. And here we'll make a quick plot. Should pop up the bottom right. There we have it. Uh, so it's a good start. It looks about right, but we want to clean it up a little bit. So here are some other options to replot it. And there we go. Have a nice, have a nice, a nice publication quality uh, graph with nice labeled. Uh, we got to make it big enough so that uh, there's no cramping of the words. There we go. That's a, I would say that's a publication quality plot. Nicely labeled, all clear. And also it, it's kind of interesting and it, it's consistent with what you would expect. Northern Ireland and Ireland are by far uh, the countries where religion is most important. And I think that's uh, quite, um, you know, in line with what we would expect. Very Catholic country. Okay, so that's, um, again, you can use that code for a different variables that you might be interested in. This is just one example. Finally, um, and we'll end here, we're not going to go into too much detail about the kinds of more sophisticated analyses you can use, but uh, many, you know, political science uh, articles or research projects will basically use some, at least some version of basic regression or, or more advanced, you know, variations on regression as kind of the main workhorse uh, for analysis. Okay, um, hang on. Um, and yeah, that's what this is right here. So you could do a regression analysis in one easy line. Uh, here we're going to predict uh, the likelihood of voting in the European Parliament election as a function of these other things, income, political interest, and media reliance, specifically in the subset uh, of data for Great Britain. Okay, and then we can take a look at the results. Um, income does not appear to have much of an effect. Political interest is a positive predictor. Media reliance is a positive predictor. And it looks like um, general likelihood of voting tends to decrease uh, as the years advance. All right. So uh, obviously we don't have a very sophisticated theory here. We can't put too much stock into these uh, coefficients. But you know, uh, you know how to how to analyze this with greater rigor and sophistication is uh, a topic for a totally other video. This is just to bring you up to this point. Um, and so yeah, I hope you find this code useful to do your own. Uh, analysis of this sort of uh, survey data.